Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 47th edition of Art Chakula, Art Talks. Art Chakula is an online community of artists, curators, galleries, museum workers, collectors, and art educators, founded by creation of Swedish artist Ivana Egic and designed to inspire through interaction and communication. Art Chakula takes place every other Sunday, and uh, all the people interested in the topic are invited to join the Zoom event. Uh, Zoom events and uh, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook page. My name is Vesna Opavski, and I will be tonight's host. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the artist uh, Van Van Liu, uh, doctoral student of uh, Teesside University in the UK. Concept art and game design. Tonight, she will be presenting her project based on the, her ecological experience in foresting Kubuki, Kubuchi Desert in China. Uh, due to the uh, interference of uh, early human activities, the Kubuki Desert uh, are uh, degenerated from grassland to the seventh largest desert in China. After more than 30 years of efforts, uh, local enterprises and residents have successfully uh, forested uh, one third of the Kubuchi Desert, forming a sustainable landscape of green and rich. Combining art uh, with the science and the psychology, when when Liu digital art, artwork enhances um, the audience perception and helps them inter, inter, interpret uh, the phenomena of climate change. By transforming abstract art uh, material into uh, physical material. It promotes art uh, as a creative tool to connect climate, climate change uh, with the global thinking and help people question the past and current situation. Van with Liu uses uh, data visualization and algorithm coding to build a, a discussion space and uh, through art attract people's attention to this subject. This presentation will take approximately 40 minutes. And after that, you can ask questions and share comments about the project. You can also type in the chat box and we will uh, get back to them later. So now I would like to give the word to our, the, our tonight's exhibitor, Miss Van Van Liu. So here, here you go. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I need to share my screen. Now, hi all. Thanks for inviting me to be part of today's presentation. And um, my name is Wen Liu, and today I'm going to speak about creative art in response to climate change, how art transforms and frames new approaches to speculative and ecological sustainable futures. Climate change is impacting all aspects of life. Many artists engage in this area, they use art practice in response to climate change, such as in America, extreme weather caused by climate has led to many disasters, such as floods. Therefore, American artist Eva Mosher took six months to create a public art project, High Water Nine, in 2007. During the whole art making process, she held a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with local people to discuss climate change and its impact in their life and New York City. So in 2012, after Hurricane Sandy flooded many areas of her marked line, the prediction of high water line was validated. Consistently, Marshall's work is based on hard research. She links the many problems through communication with others, mature learning and in-depth learning to the decline of environmental stability. And then she created a future space throughout that allows the people to feel the impact of climate change to reach a consensus on the action and achieve a possible bright future. Because of the climate change, glaciers are melting. Danny's artist, Oliver Eliasson, has been committed to studying climate change throughout an electronic media and exploring speculative futures. In 2018, Ellison cooperated with a geologist to create an ice watch, which was placed in the public square in front of the Tate Museum in London. Through this artwork, Ellison made the invisible efforts of climate change become visible, at the same time, allowed the audience to watch the melting process of glaciers 
through human behavior to think about climate warming. This thinking process sometimes makes people recognize their existence and participation in specific situations, helps people think about the relationship between nature and mankind, physical phenomena and climate change, and provides the problem of future responsibility. So for this artwork, we can say that they regard art as a powerful weapon to respond to climate change. Although art cannot help people directly solve problems, and it, it can help people face up to the problems, question the current situation, and explore a sustainable and speculative future. Then, what is climate change? According to some report by IPPC or some the, the union, human activities such as burning fossil fuels and land use cause a large amount of organic carbon to, the, to enter into the atmosphere in the form of CO2 leading to atmospheric, atmospheric greenhouse effect, changing the balance of the material and energy between land and atmosphere. This causes global temperature to rise, resulting in long-term changes to the climate. The environmental effects of climate change are worldwide. It not only impacts on humans, but also impacts on non-humans. For example, in 2019, due to human activities, the Amazon rainforest suffered in a three-week fire, which killed many species and trees. At the same time, a large amount of black smoke spread from the Amazon to the nearby parts of Monte Grosso, São Paulo, and Pará. Especially, the smoke forest coverage is more than 3,000 kilometers in São Paulo, which turned the entire city into a night and caused a large block out. This fire has led to a significant surge in global greenhouse gases, which not only poses a danger to human health, but also accelerates global warming and a series of associated consequences. So in this event, human disturbance has not only seriously damaged the ecological environment and led to climate change, but also brought negative consequences to human life. So to fight against the climate change, many communities or countries have launched the ecological restoration project. For example, this is the Eden project located in the Indo-UK. It restored an abundant place to be a famous tourist attraction. And currently it is planning new projects with the purpose of revising the ecological decline and bringing water flowers back into the British life culture. In this project, human disturbance plays a positive impact on the environment, forming a system of life and ecology consisting of forest species and other elements. So overall, everything is interconnected. The negative human disturbance will have a serious impact on human life, security, and the ecosystem. The positive human disturbance can protect the human beings, adapt and regulate the climate to achieve long-term sustainable future. So in my project, my research interests and focus mainly concentrate on human disturbance between behavior and the climate change. Therefore, I prefer to find a specific ecological case, which is the future that has become a reality through people's positive disturbance. And then taking visual research and aspects practice as research to respond to climate change. The purpose is to explore how visual art can impact issue-based concepts and ideologies through the presentation, representation, and interpretation as a framework for coping with climate change and reimagining society to sustainable future. So in 2020, I went to the Kubuj Desert to do participatory observational research Due to the disturbance of early human activities, the Kupchi Desert had degenerated from grassland to the seventh largest desert in China. Although forest vegetation can reproduce with human disturbance, the terrible environment of the Kupchi Desert has far exceeded the natural regulation ability. Therefore, the Kupchi Desert cannot realize ecological system by itself. On the premise of respecting the local desert ecosystem, local companies and the Chinese government use afforestation 
as the main method to repel the ecological management of the Kupch Desert. With over 13 years of efforts, they have successful a forest one third of the Kupch Desert, promoting forest vegetation and other species to regain living space and retain the Kupch Desert ecosystem provides people with valuable forest resources, economical resources, and food resources, developing a green and rich landscape. And currently, in the Kupch Desert, forest, humans, and the other species living together, redesigning and shaping the current sustainable ecological system. This forms a tributary win win situation. So this green project shows that people's positive actions may change everything and that people have the opportunity to create a better future. Its concept is very suitable for the research direction of my project. Therefore, I chose the Kubich Desert as a specific research site for this project. And in this participatory observational research, I had a dialogue with the local people to deeply understand the restoration and its benefits of the Kubich Desert. According to the Zhang Xiwang, from this picture on the left hand, he is the rep representative of the center control staff. According to him, 32 years ago, the Kubich Desert was a dead sea without a road, water, electricity, transportation, and medical facilities. There were 50 sandstorms in the Kubich Desert each year, seriously affecting the air quality of surrounding cities such as Beijing and Tianjin. Because of the bad desert environment, local people's houses were destroyed by wind and sand, therefore increasing economic pressure on the residents. According to research from China government, the income of the residents in the Kubich Desert at that time was less than 50 pounds per year. This made me feel shocked. This, this just shocked me because the annual income of 50 pounds only can pay for a few meals in the restaurant for the Chinese people at that time. Therefore, it is an urgent task to restore the ecological system of the Kubich Desert. In 2002, Zhang and his villager were invited by the local company to plant the trees in the Kukchi Desert for two pounds per day. Because they lacked experience, many trees did not survive, which led them to work hard without pay or reward. However, with the rich experience of planting trees, the survival rate of trees is getting higher and higher. Zhang Xiwang's salary has gradually increased from two pounds per day to 11 pounds per day. Through the efforts of Zhang Xiwang and his village and other sand control people's efforts, the Kubich Desert have been successfully controlled for more than 6,000 square kilometers. Zhang Xiwang's income increased from about 200 pounds per year to 11,000 pounds per year. Because of this green project, a hundred thousand people have been left it out of poverty. Also, the Kupch Desert system also changed a lot. From 2002 to 2016, the forest coverage increased from 0.8% to 15.7%, and the vegetation coverage increased from 16.2% to 53%. Sandstorms decreased from 50 times a year to one time per year. The species of animals and the plants increased from less than 10 to 530. After talking with Zhang Xiwang, I and other volunteers plant the trees in the desert by using the traditional method of digging and watering. At the beginning of the desert ecosystem, this kind of Tree planting method was very difficult for sand control people because at that time there were desert everywhere and the climate was very bad. However, at present, due to the mature, uh, due to the maturity, uh, due to the maturity of science and uh, technology, the local companies have developed a mighty convenient method to plant trees, such as using amanda aero vehicles to plant a tree. Therefore, this traditional tree method tree planting method has evolved into an entertainment experience. For me, I really like this activity 
because it can offset my carbon emotion. And also because I plant a tree in this desert, it will, uh, the tree I planted will always exist from now to the future. Its whole life will not only fix carbon, but also will release a certain amount of oxygen to participate in climate regulation. If people participate in these similar positive actions, I believe that it will bring great changes and even affect the future. Through this ecological experience, I do believe that people can disturb the ecological environment through their efforts, make it develop in a better direction and feedback to human beings, even next generation. And also, I'm more sensitive people to the temperature. If it's too hot, my emotions will be very irritable. If it, if it is too cold, my emotions will be very upset. But when I was in the Kupch Desert, I felt so comfortable. I don't feel too hot during the day or too cold at night. And also, when I was planting the tree, the temperature was still comfortable. I mean, because of the climate change, the temperature of some areas in the world has changed. As you can see from this picture, it is Qinzang Gaoyuan in China. From 1961 to 2020, its annual average temperature increased by 0.35 degrees centigrade every 10 years. But when I studied the temperature data of the Kupchi Desert from 1959 to 2020, as you can see from this picture, the temperature fluctuation is not obvious. This is very interesting. This proof, this proof that Chinese government and local, local companies carry out ecological restoration on the premise of respecting and protecting the desert system. Therefore, in this project, I prefer to use the temperature data from the Kupchi Desert as material to show how people's active disturbance plays a greater role in ecological restoration and climate change. But actually, data is the main method for many scientists to reverse climate change, but data cannot give people an intuitive feeling. So to better explain climate change through ad and data, I conducted visual research, including interdisciplinary research and aesthetic research on the representative works of digital artists involved in using data to explain climate change. The purpose is to better integrate multidisciplinary issues to further explore and answer the research questions of my project, thereby seeking an effective way to strengthen the communication between humans and the natural ecosystem and improve people's understanding of climate change and explore speculative future. And also because of the early research of 15 visual artists, such as I mentioned at the beginning, Eva Mosher and Oliver Eliasson, I prefer to use digital media art as the art form to translate data. According to the Zhou Xinming and the Sen, Sen Wen Chiang, discussed in the characteristics of digital media art in their article, Symmetric Analyze of Digital Media Art. Digital media art is a form of art creation convening a, convert a wide range of, including game design, art design, modeling design, computer language, digital image, and dig, digital image design, and so on. It is comprehensive and multi-directional, showing the perfect integration of art and science and technology. And it is the product of a com complementary and mutual benefit between art and science and the technology. And also, I have engaged in digital media art since I was an undergraduate. Therefore, it is a good way to help me translate with data more effectively. Here, I will quickly show some examples of my visual research. To learn the gap between climate science, climate science and art, some artists have developed interdisciplinary approaches to deepen an understanding of climate change. For example, American digital artist Andrew Pauly 
She worked with scientists to create this artwork in 2003. It is a series of audiovisual works providing a series of ultrasonic images to explain and predict climate change, mainly focusing on downtown and Central Park in New York. At the same time, it is also displayed a multi-channel stereo headset and speaker installation. In this artwork, Pony used the sound as a narrative to interpret in a climate change in a new way of thinking. By combining art with science and uh, psychology, she created a space to guide the audience to actively explore the relationship between humans and the climate change. By using metaphor, she transformed the temperature data into sound to convert the emotional content or short edited with data and help people imagine climate change. In response to climate change, some digital artists are committed to explain the responsibility and the responsibility and the relationship between human activities and the ecological environment through art responding to climate change. In November 2018, due to extreme weather in California, there was no obvious precipitation for over 200 days, which triggered an urban firestorm. The repeatedly spreading fire killed at least 85 people and almost destroyed the towns of Paradise and Congo. Based on this, Andrew Sega created Wildfire Progression Series to record this event and explore the connection and difference between natural disasters and man-made events. In this artwork, Sega used the interdisciplinary approaches to combine science research, data visualization, digital technology, landscape, and materiality. She took scientific data as conceptual resources and created a visualized narrative method so that people can see the relationship between man and climate closely. Meanwhile, she linked the climate change with people's history and emotions, expanded the value definition of data, and gave the audience a new perspective to understand climate change. As philosopher Thomas Martin said, everything is interconnected. Climate change is related not only to the present, but also to the future and the past. To fight against the climate change, some digital artists used art practice to explore solutions. According to Nora Frack's study, 25% of global emissions come from food, more than transportation, 19%, and housing, 17%. Therefore, she believes that a little change in people's doubt can promote public support for the new policy, which is carbon emission reduction. In 2020, Fred collaborated with Google Ads and uh, Culture to create an interactive work, What We Eat, to test the impact of various food on the environment. In this work, through art installations, and the data, Frank tells people a story about their emotional response, a real, concrete, and very personal story. This not only effectively interprets the relationship between climate change and the carbon emissions, but also connects personal daily life with climate from the emotional level. Therefore, it can speculate on the future of humans and the climate change. So in general, in my visual research, I divide this artist into three parts. To explain climate phenomena, some artists, such as Polly, transform data into visual language related to people's daily life, explaining and uh, interpreting climate change. With the help of art, they established an environmental narrative and created a new way of emotional communication to help people communicate effectively with climate change. In response to climate crisis, some artists such, such as Siga encourage people to think about their relationship with climate change. Through creative art practice, they explain that the causes of climate change and influence people and transform society through cultural transformation. To raise the issue of future responsibility, some artists such as Nurofreak regard art as a creative tool with the function of education, communication, dissemination, and transformation, focus the creative expression on a positive and a creative future. So totally by linking out with other disciplines, artists 
can explore material reality and deepen people's understanding of climate change throughout to enhance people's perception and consciousness. Artists can change people's attitude towards the environment and the natural ecology and shape sustainable values. Throughout to arouse people's thinking process, artists can help people look back on the past, face the present, look forward to the future, redesign the current life, and realize the future. Throughout to connect people's daily life with climate change, artists can encourage people to take action to explore a beautiful and sustainable future. So based on my visual research, as well as ecological experience in the Kukchi Desert, I decided to use combine digital art and other subjects to visualize the temperature data of the Kukuchi Desert from 1959 to 2020, telling a story about realizing a speculative future through people's positive actions. Through algorithm coding, I transferred the temperature data into colors. According to the research by Escoba in the journal article called The Temperature of Emotions, people's emotion and temperature are closely related well, as the most intuitive feeling, color also has the similar effect to the temperature. This has been stated, uh, this has been stated in the article called the effect, Effects of Color on Emotions, published by Norhabi in 1994, and another journal article called Investigation of Human's Emotional Response to on Colors by Gao Shopping in 2006. So consistently, I visualized the data by color aiming to enhance people's emotions and feelings about climate change. Due to my ecological experience in the Kukchi Desert, I believe it is necessary to find a space where people and uh, all uh, where, uh, to find a space where all species can live together, which will be conducive uh, conducive to our future and to cope with climate change at present. And therefore, I use Unreal Engine to create these 744 rooms and use the color of lighting to create atmosphere and remind people of their living space. From my perspective, we were living in a space called Earth. We were living in a space called home. After a busy day outside, we will eventually return to our own space and relax and sleep here. It will make us feel so comfortable and safe. But actually, this living space is comp composed of many things, such as organic life, and in organic environment to run the function of this space. Therefore, I created this work with nice and empty rooms, helping me to connect the, with audience daily life to cover the concept of a life community. And also because of the color of light is translated by the temperature of data of the Kukchi Desert. Therefore, through this artwork, people can intuitively see the temperature changes in the Kukchi Desert from 1959 to 2020, and they will find that there is not too much difference in the temperature of the Kukchi Desert in the past 62 years, mainly because of the ecological restoration project of the Kukchi Desert is under premise of respecting the desert ecosystem. So that's why it doesn't cause damage to the desert system. And also, this desert system restoration project creates a sustainable ecological and uh, economical system in which people live in harmony with nature. So totally in this work, I take a specific successful ecological restoration case as the research object, explore the impact of the current serious climate problems and their serious consequences on human future development and for the possible use, interactions, and behaviors through digital art. The purpose is to find and create a discussion space, develop alternative social imagine, imagination, encourage people to think and find a sustainable speculative future, conducive to uh, existence of all people. So this artwork now received some invitations from some galleries online and uh, offline, such as online magazines and uh, art exhibitions. Actually, based on this artwork, I also developed another forms. This is another digital art forms of climate coding, just uh, based on some feedback from the artist. From the another one, I would like to talk about this one. This work is also based on the digital media art, climate coding. 
The purpose is to help people intuitively see the terrible pictures caused by the change of the temperature rise and its impact on themselves. It is a real-time data visualization. In this other work, the key, in, the key important is the future. So what is the future? It is a concept that does not exist but it's about to appear. Tomorrow is the future of today, while the present is the future of the past. So in this artwork, real-time climate coding as a metaphor for the future is the future of the past. Throughout the development of human history, humans have been trying to attain a better life that is always becoming and revolving. People have created various possibilities that did not exist at the beginning. Actually, this possibilities are a state in which the world exists and a state of existence in the future of new things. So to meet the requirement of the life, people must constantly surpass the existing social conditions. As a result, the requirement has become a drive that promotes the development of society and generates various possibilities, making human, humans never satisfied with the status quo. Therefore, they just push themselves to chase some beautiful things. So briefly, as a not yet being, the future awakens a, the hope for a better life instead of describing the existence. So in this artwork, real-time climate coding discusses a future picture. Through it, people can directly see their contribution toward climate change, thereby encouraging them to take actions for speculative and sustainable futures. At the same time, it records the process that human must constantly surpass the existing social conditions and the pursue a bottom life. Constantly, uh, certainly, people also can see the negative side of the future. And another artwork, this is my early practice before I conduct a computer investigation. It is called Invisible Insight. It is drawn by digital software, consists of a totally 12 patterns. It represents a small ecological environment, the biosphere. The patterns of the formation of the formation in each circle are different and together from the ecosystem of the earth. This pattern resembles human eyes. As all people will recite, eyes is the is the window of the soul, can cover rich emotions and are the most critical part of human performance. This kind of art practice helps to establish the relationship between humans and the ecological environment through the media of eyes, encourage people to find their own position in the ecosystem and think about the relationship between humans and the eco environment in the future. Scientifically, the eye is the most important, uh, again, for human beings to perceive light and about 80% of the lunacy in the brain is aborted through eye. Once the eyes are damaged, human beings will completely lose visual contact with the outside world. If the earth is a micro ecosystem, then the eye is a micro ecosystem. The earth, ec the earth ecosystem refers to the unity of biology and environment in a certain natural space in this artwork, it refers to a unit of biology and the environment, as well as restrict to each other species and are in a relative stable state of dynamic balance in a certain period of time. So just in other words, ecosystems are as uh, complex as the structure of the human eye. If the function of one structure changed, it will affect the function of other structures. So, in this artwork, if, for example, if our eye was damaged, it will damage a lot of things to the human beings, to human self. So this artwork just, uh, want, just want to create an environment associated with the daily life, awaken people's collective identity and reflect and perceive the relationship between human beings and nature. So overall, 
My research have brought together critical theory and the contextual thinking within a visual framework. This method not only combines art with interdisciplinary thinking to expand, to expand multidisciplinary questions, but further explores how visual and creative narratives and metaphors engender creative transformation in the space of climate change. The power of the climate education is brought into place through other practice. Creative intention combined with specific climate issues integrates personal and collective emotions, transforming individuals and the audience shaping sustainable thinking within global societies. So in summary, art as an ideology, metaphor and a new approaches to narrative visual storytelling when viewed through a metaphor methodological interdisciplinary lens can deepen an understanding of climate change and the form of new insight and positive visualization for speculative futures. Through art, artists can build imaginative space to rethink and refigure that comprehensive reimagine daily life, encourage people to reflect on their lives and behaviors and question their relationship to the planet, the climate, and promote sustainable values. Integrating global warming and global thinking into art ask one to review the past, face the present, and look forward to the future in a process of reimagining and rewarding to realize a sustainable speculative futures. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, Wen Wen, very much. I have to say I enjoyed a lot. Uh, you gave us so, so many pieces of, of information. I really have to think more and more. I, I think I will uh, view the recordings a lot of times to understand everything you wanted to say. And I agree with your um, uh, opinion that we all have to take a part in uh, uh, protecting our uh, planet. So I, I'm sure this your uh, presentation uh, influenced me to think about more when I using the play flights and uh, things that which I'm use a lot. <laughs> Recently, I noticed that there is that carbon emission everywhere. So I have to calculate how much was my um, my uh, my part of uh, pollu polluting the planet. So now I don't feel that good, but I will make another plan. <laughs> So now uh, we came to the part when everybody ca can ask some questions. So questions can all be also be typed in the chat box or just uh, you can ask for the word and ask our uh, guest uh, when, when anything you like. Till then, maybe I can start with some questions until uh, somebody else uh, takes um, uh, take some time to prepare some questions. Uh, I can ask you uh, like, uh, uh, if you can tell us more about the uh, organization of the foresting, uh, like uh, uh, how are uh, how were the people that uh, took part in foresting the desert, how they were like, and uh, do you met a lot of uh, did you met a lot of people there, and uh, your impression about those people there? Did uh, they all like cared a lot, or just came to because of of, of their enterprises or? What are, were the people like? Yeah, just so when I went to the Cook Desert, I met a lot of local people, and some people, most of people, they don't have they that they doesn't have the no sorry they don't have the job before before the uh, forestation because they are just known people they li they live in the desert and uh, they feed some animals to support uh, their life, but. Because the income just a little, as I mentioned, during that time, just only 50 pounds per year. So they need to figure out a way to improve their life quality to support their life. And because they also have some children, so they need to support them. They need to send them to the school. But actually, in the coach desert, they, doesn't have, they don't have some primary school. So the, the local government, they just want to do something to help the local people. And also another uh, a man, he is a man, he is a manager of the of a industrial of a business. Uh, sorry, he is a manager in the Cooksy Desert. So he also want to do something can change the people's life. So he just uh, launched a little restoration project 
and uh, to support uh, to to organize his business and then he got the money and invested the money into the desert system to do a sand control industrial and as well as some sand, con sand business and then after uh, about uh, after several years he has a lot of money and uh, this and he also ha has a huge impact so the local government i mean the chinese government they know that news. Oh, they just find it's a good way to do the restoration. So they just uh, give that man a lot of money to help the local people to build the road, to build the medical facilities, and to build some uh, entertainment things, as well as the school or some new new buildings. So now it's changed a lot. Before I just got some pictures from just um, twenty years ago and uh, a lot of desert anywhere no buildings no entertainment things but but actually but last year i went to the Kubuji desert well i just feel i didn't go to the desert i just go to uh to, i just go to a beautiful place where i can have a holiday you know <laughs> and the name stayed it's not is it called now Kubuji desert or that part uh, it has a different name now no, it's just the called the Kubuji Desert. They didn't change it. They doesn't change the name. Yeah, didn't change the name. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's strange. And tell me, so people that came to earn money, do you think they changed their uh, like um, opinion about uh, taking more care about the planet now? And what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before they, they before they didn't have the opinion about the protecting environment, but after. They do the refer uh, forest region and they say their hometown has changed a lot. So every people went to the Kubuji Desert. They just told the to tell the person and tell the people to protect the local environment. And also they do take some actions such as they they hold some when uh, they hold some activities to tell people how they protect the environment, how they plant the tree, and how this area contributes to the climate change. So, so now it has become a very successful case in China. So a lot of people know that. And also some companies from the other cities, they just launched some cooperation project, such as, do you know Ma Yun? Uh, China, he is very, in China, he is very famous. We were used the Alipay created by Ma Yun, and uh, he just uh, launched the anti forest, this project, cooperated with the Kubuji Desert. And uh, for the Chinese people, we also have the Alipay application uh, just in my cell phone, and we use that Alipay uh, application to forest a uh, virtual tree. You know, every day we will pay a lot of things with the electricity application and pay, um, such as we pay the bill, we buy some stuff. So every time we pay the bill, we will get a uh, green energy and use that green energy to forest the virtual tree. And when the virtual tree grew up in a certain age, the in the in the real life, another people will help you to forest the tree in the Kochi Desert or in other area. So in other words, my interest to cooperate with the Kochi Desert or the other place to forest a cooperation project, encourage the whole people in China to take actions to protect the environment. So you think uh, how many people took part in the project all together via app and uh, there on the, on its site or is yeah. it the millions of people or no, not just a million, that's just a billion. <laughs> uh, uh, according to my research, it's about 0 0.5 billion people in China take participate in the planting tree. Amazing. I'm embarrassed because I didn't hear about that uh, at all. And tell me about in, in China, government has uh, some plan to uh, make uh, of uh, other deserts also a beautiful place or what's happening? Is that the only desert or? No, no, Chinese people now manage a lot of desert, such as another one called uh, Mao Su, also in the Inner Mongolia, but also uh, that's just in the north of China. But for the south of China, you know, 
is uh, south of China has a lot of uh, forest, uh, so they don't need to do the restoration. Just uh, only focus on the north and uh, north south, uh, northeast. Yeah, because doing that area have a lot of sand, so they need to control. Yeah. And also because of the industrial pollution, uh, since the China has been, uh, yeah, China has been built in 19, 1949, Yeah, because of with, with the development of China. They just generate a lot of pollution, such as air pollution, water pollution. So, since the since the last century, they just launched a lot of re, um, a lot of project to restore the environment. So now, China has a lot of beautiful places and uh, a lot of restoration. And wow. now, because they want to launch the uh, because they want to protect the environment and also promote the ecological. An economic development. So they just uh, to restore the local place and then develop this place into a tourism. Yeah. Okay, we will visit one day, I hope. <laughs> um, um, there is a question in the chat uh, by Jasna Opavsky. Uh, thank you for sharing your complex and con uh, concept with us. It's, it is very inspiring uh, for deeper thinking about uh, raising awareness about our personal responsibility for the well-being of the whole of the human humanity humanity sorry uh, where and how do you present your work yeah currently i just uh, because this is my phd project so i need to promote uh, develop it i, I mean I, I just need to i just want to let more people learn this project so as my contribution can influence more people yeah so i just currently i display my artwork online and offline such as some galleries in the london and some online galleries uh i, I need to check because i just put in the, my presentation uh the slide yeah it just like have uh, some it, it displayed in the micro galleries it is a global Project projection art and display in twelve in ten countries such as uh, Philippines, London, Hong Kong, and uh, as well as the other cities. And uh, also, it is displayed in the Boom Gallery and the Pop Up Gallery in London. And uh, I also have some, I also got invit invitations from four international conferences. Uh, I will do my conferences tomorrow and. Uh, in the next four months from the international art conference so they are mostly online conferences yeah yeah, yeah because of the pandemic yeah. and i also got an invitation from the south korea but the pandemic i don't know maybe i will attend online <laughs> okay thank you uh, i also want to ask you uh, how people react to your uh, uh, art are there any questions comments yeah, I, I do got some comments from the some influential artists such as Andrew Polly and uh, Laura Freak. They just uh, I, I just showed them artwork and they gave me some a uh, great feedback. The most the, the the most important I just think because the as you can see from the climbing coding, I designed seven hundred forty four rooms and uh, put them together. Yeah, so Andrew Polly just just give me a suggestion. She just told me maybe I could just deeply think about the relationship between the architecture with the human life because architecture is another way that can in that protect people's life and uh, it's very important in people's daily life. So she just uh, she just uh, gave me some uh, feedback about that. For the Nora Freak, she just talk about the digital way. She just said maybe I could try some interactive way to promote my artwork. Yeah, nice. You let us know when you have some uh, activities, you let us know. Uh, we, I will be interested to hear more. Also, I, OK, there is one more question in the chat uh, uh, or comments we will see now. It is very nice. Uh, it's by uh, Ivana Kutuzovic. It is very nice project presentation and interesting as well. Great positive changes are happening around the world, world but uh, what interested me is how much energy, water and res resources are used and still using for greening the desert. Thank you. 
so uh, the question was uh, how uh, how much yeah how much water and resources are still be used uh, for greening the desert or now it's sustainable but yeah before that before that i you know i'm not a climate artist you know i just only did the research as i can get because yeah. some data is privacy you know i yeah. can't get that so for the data i can get just from some basic line and also i'm a visual artist yeah so i just collect the important data which i need as well as uh, and also the ecological experience is the most important part uh, it is the most important part instead of the data the data just uh, is a kind of uh, it is a kind of way that i can use in my artwork but it's not an important part mm -hmm. the most important part is my ecological experience, experience yeah. yeah your emotions but also I will have a question about that but also, also I had to comment the previous question I guess uh, that uh, the lot of uh, money were invested but probably uh, everything paid off uh, even with the re resources now there are more electricity more water coming from the area I guess oh, yeah I according, also to, my, don't know according to my research the government and the local company just uh, invested over a billion yuan yuan not a donor it's Chinese yuan over a billion okay. yuan into this area to do the restoration Mm, you know, sometimes if in because in China, people is the most important part because we are the public of China. Yeah. So um, the government would like to pay more uh, to invest more money to invest in, uh, to improve the quality of the people. So they don't care about the money. They just care about the people's life. So that's why this is the main reason to do the restoration project. Yeah. Nice. Also, I can ask you more about uh, um, coding. Uh, so you were doing that algorithm coding. Do you do that yourself? Do you have somebody that helped you hired somebody or you know to code yourself? And uh, how is the process like? So how did you um, uh, execute your artwork uh, with the climate change temperatures? Yeah, for that part, I just uh, cooperated with another digital technologist. Uh, at, uh, yeah, he, uh, he he is an, he is a artist and also a technologist, and I just uh, in charge of the visual part, and he is in charge of the coding. So we cooperate, and I just told him my plan. And uh, he helped me to code some things such as the, the temperature Arduino and uh, how to run the function of the co climate coding. And uh, for that artwork, we just uh, divided that into three parts. It consists of three digital screen and, and, and one archive file. And the, the, the digital screen, the digital screen one, just uh, to show people the climate change in real time. And the digital screen two just uh, print the temperature data in color in, in, a, in one minute. So it consists of one, uh, 50, 50, uh, 15, 1440 square, uh, square. So after 12 hours, this square will be full of color. And through the, the digital screen two, you can visualize the data in one day. I mean, the data temperature in one day. And also, it will be automatic saved after 24 hours. So it's just used to su supervise the data temperature every day. And you can you, you can check the data data change the, from the archive file. So uh, also, so you gave the uh, some info and the idea, but did you after that coding, did you have uh, took part of uh, doing some visual effects on it or no? You mean the real time or before? Uh, you mean do the uh, the real time data visualization? Yeah, before do the uh, before. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I do. I do. I do do the visual research because it's very important part. You know, at at research, it's very the most important part is the other theory. When we do some things, we need to have some theory to support us to do some things. Mm -hmm. So, in my project, when I decided to do the climate change, this topic. So I just uh, do some art practice, but that art practice 
just some basic art practice without some art theories. So I do the visual researches to get me to know more things about art and climate change. So as you, I will deepen my understanding of how to use the art, visual art, to depth it, to translate climate change. So when I about us and the art theory on the guidance of the art theory from in from aesthetic research, I will know how to do my artwork to resonate with people's emotion and people and build the connection between art and the humans. Yeah, that's that's very important. Yeah, of course. And which programs have you used? Programs. Uh, you mean the for the coding? Yeah, yeah, for the whole artwork, yeah. Yeah, so I mean. the I use uh for the real time data. I just uh, use I, I use the processing. It's a it's a digital coding coding software just uh, for the people engage in the digital area. And also I use the Unreal Engine Four because it it is a kind of it is a game engine. As I mentioned before, I'm a game designer, so I know how to use that engine. But for the coding, um, because it is another it, another path, I, I just uh, know a little in the jazz. It's a kind of a game engine language instead of the digital art, uh, digital art language. So I just need someone to help me to code. OK. Uh, you are also mentioned you are a game designer. Can you tell us more about uh, that uh, field of your work? Oh, pardon? Tell uh, you, more about data. Uh, game design. You said you are also a game designer. So oh, yeah. can you tell us about uh, that a little bit more? How long? Oh. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, since the since 1913, I was an uh, undergraduate. I just specialized in the game design. Uh, after four years, I went to the UK. So I also studied the game design. <laughs> and currently, I am doing my PhD study in the digital art, but I also do the some jobs in the game design. For my, I just since uh, just in 1918, I'm a game designer tutor to teach students online to help them how to design a game and to do the concept art as well as the UI uh, game UI design. Mm -hmm, yeah, user inter interface. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just translated for because not all people are familiar with that term um and tell me uh, so you are currently working on, on your you currently work on your doctoral thesis and uh, what do you, when do you expect it to be like uh, finished and uh, what this research brought uh, uh, to your art that is new uh, i mean what are your further plans how this doctoral uh, project will reflect to your for, uh, future art yeah, uh, for me, I prefer to graduate this year because it's the third year of my PhD study. Hopefully, I, I just hope everything is going to be right so I can graduate on time. After I graduate, I prefer to do the postdoctor <laughs> because I find a very interesting topic in the University of London. They also do the, uh, they, they just do the research in the art and the climate change. So I just think that's very that's very interesting and related to my PhD study. So I really want to have the opportunity to join that program. Okay. Uh, anyone else wants to ask something? Okay. We have we had those questions in chat, but nobody wants to say say something. Some impressions. Or something else about uh, ecology, climate changing. Yeah, uh, another comment. Thank you for sharing your artwork with us. And I hope, uh, yeah, uh, it was really nice. So, Ljubica, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to say it was really impressive. Uh, some things I didn't understand, but I'm impressed with what I heard. And uh, it is really interesting. And um, Thank you very much for that. Yeah, there, there were really a lot of data. It was very fast and uh, uh, we will, uh, uh, I hope we will publish on Instagram and Facebook some segments of the presentation so we can uh, read it carefully and uh, think a little bit longer about uh, 
some information we got uh, tonight. So uh, there is another comment. Tamara Zechevic says uh, thank you. It was really interesting, and I will also need at least one minute time to watch your uh, one more time. Sorry, one more time to watch your lecture. <laughs> So that's, yeah, we will also, after watching your lecture, we can leave also some comments uh, below this uh, video when it's uploaded to YouTube. So <laughs> discussion <laughs> will go on. <laughs> I, I just need to do apologize. I'm sorry. You know, when I speak something, I mean, just uh, something interesting, I just uh, can't control myself to speak slowly, you know. No, it's totally okay. I understand you. I also, I'm also fast speaker and it's good. We will watch a few more times. It's a, that's also a good thing. So, because we will take care about uh, the env environment even more. <laughs> so that it's better to think uh, longer than one hour. Now, Lea Chech uh, says uh, it was very nice, interesting and uh, continue your work and inspire others. So it's, it was really inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> I just hope my research can have some impact on people to care more about our plan. Yeah, I'm sure it will have more impact that, that you expect because uh, you just keep going, don't stop, and uh, your efforts will be uh, obvious and will uh, influence the others, I'm sure. It's always like that. It's always important just not to give up, especially yeah. on these such topics. <laughs> Thank you. So if uh, there is no more questions, uh, okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, Wen Wen Liu for sharing uh, her interesting project and answering a lot of questions about uh, her art and herself. Um, I also want to thank all the guests that have joined uh, and enjoyed tonight's session. And uh, more images, uh, as I said, of Wen Wen's art uh, will follow on Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, also, I want to thank the audience uh, that will be watching this video later on our YouTube channel. And if you like this video, please uh, support us with liking uh, it and subscribing to Art Chocolate's channel. Uh, we are wishing uh, you a wonderful time and lot of good art until we meet again. Bye all.